sort of my secret project. I've been working on this here and there for about a year, a little over a year. When I first started, this was all completely grown up. You couldn't see the canal. You couldn't even see any water in it. Grown up with trees and brush, this line right here was completely grown up. That loop right there, you couldn't see into the backfield, or if you were in this backfield, you couldn't even see past the tree line. So that was the first thing I did, is remove this metal loop. All the trees, all the brush, vines, roots, little by little. And then I had turned to this. Same thing was true along this line. Small trees and brush all along here. Granted, it had swallowed up the whole canal, so it was right down this line. You could see a little trickle down there. It looked like a little brook or something. Full of debris. So I just started hacking away at it little by little. Got down to where those trees were and started to see that the towpath was revealing itself. Because in this section of Clinton's ditch, the towpath ran on the south side. So right here you can see where this is puddling over. It's because the levee was, was completely removed and thrown in the canal. There was a peninsula of land there. So after I had cleared this out with the, the spring rain, and this had filled up a few times, and I've put a little coffer dam there in front of the culvert. And the water would back up, go past the line, the towpath. And it would be well into here, if not further. That would all be completely submerged because none of that towpath berm was there. I dug it out. I started building it. The more I started going, the more everything just kind of made sense or told you what to do you could easily see where the garbage and the pig bones everything they had used for fill and when you get down to the canal line it's just this you can't see it now because the water is too deep but it's just a a nice flat clay bed you know when you get there it was all sediment uh muck some fillings So I almost had it to where it had to be. And Art Simmons got involved. He's, uh, he likes to sneer. That's what he likes to do. Basically cause trouble, feel important. The ironic thing is, is he's not educated at all and he doesn't know that much. He does nothing for the community. But anyways, he started crying and shut me down, so I had to stop fixing this berm. But I got the most part of it done where it can have some water. So now we're walking down the old towpath, south side. This is still the part that I had built, or fixed. Now this is what was remaining. It should be a foot or two higher than it is now.
section on the north side. I've spent a lot of time this summer clearing that out. I foresee that being a very nice area. Hangout spot. Picnic tables, you know, the whole deal. We got these two buildings here. I've been cleaning them out as well, clearing up around them. Those have no future as far as everyone else was concerned. I see the potential in those two buildings and I'm gonna make this back area very nice. See, so right there's the leaky point. I could fix that, but it's not worth dealing with the Rome Historic Society. It, So you can see how uneven the path is. It's been dug and thrown to the canal. This is the part that I didn't dig. And it's so choppy and there's so many low points, like right here. just a lot of water flowing out of there. Now the water's not always gonna be this high. I've got it in there, one, to test the canal. I can see spots like this, but also to protect that middle loop there. It's so narrow that when a lot of water rushes through there, it'll flood up over the, the Fort Bull Road. And it's been eroding it, so each time it's gotta go up just a little bit or a little less to, to be able to get to the road. Pretty soon it'll be too easy. This I've weed whacked where it's, it's, it's low about a month ago. And I got as far as here. I cleared this last winter of the trees right to where you see the larger trees start. That's how far I'd gotten. And I whacked this once early spring. So from maybe April until now, that's how much growth you get. Mostly goldenrod. Now from this point on, the canal gets even better. The, the levees are more pronounced, wider, higher canal prisms nicer but it's been raining I don't want to walk through that I'll get all wet it's too early in the day to get wet so I just want to take a moment to film this because it's another stage and be in this this fall But what I want to do is I want to clear up this edge. I want to smooth out the path and it'll be a very nice walk path. Walk the original contract of the Erie Canal. They dug this the first summer. They were still learning a lot right at this point. Was clearing this this was this was pretty pretty wooded over here especially on that side um, there was a lot of leaners over the canal and I had cut them down and afterwards I'd realized man that really added some appeal it looked cool so I left that one and I got one more leaner right there they'll probably end up coming down soon anyways but for the meantime I left too
There's a nice apple orchard over here. 10 to 20 apple trees that give nice size apples. My goal is to have this cleared out and that'll be a nice little area too. And if I patch that spot in the towpath berm there, I won't have all this water in here. But right now it's kind of a safety valve. It's not bothering anything. I don't mind it flooding that area. On the northern side, we've lost a little bit of canal, a foot or two here or there. It just needs the edge cleaned up. There's some riprap in there, both new and old. They had added some over in here with the canal village. But once you get past that little dock that I'm pecking away at, it was in disrepair and the bones are still pretty solid and I got a huge pile of scrap wood over there so I've been fishing through that grabbing two by sixes and repairing that dock little by little but anyways past there the riprap starts to get pretty good and it's original so you can see why I built this um, if Fart Simmons would have listened to me for a moment, he would have understood, but he didn't want to learn anything. He just wanted to sneer. So there's a 30 inch concrete culvert underneath this road. And the same goes for that one right there. Eventually I would like to remove them and build maybe one farm bridge, wooden. had this all uh, cleaned up nice not too long ago but for the last month or so I've been working down here to clear this western part and this is just a couple now oh, probably a month growth right there doesn't take a whole lot of effort to clean that up this is where I was talking about it's part, part of the reason why I have that blocked off over there is to keep the water up there because too much comes through this narrow channel and it goes up this little uh, ditch and it'll flood over this road and fill up that whole front yard like a pond and that's in complete ruins that wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but it's eroding the road. We don't go back there much, but we got some sneering public that, that go back there five times a week. So got to make sure they have a path. And also with these 30 inch culverts, they can only pass so much water. So when it's raining this hard, well, you see that's worked out perfect what I've done. That's not too high at all. It's about normal, a little bit higher than normal. Up there, it's very high, but it's not hurting anything. I looked on Route 46 and the water level going under the road isn't a problem. So the level, 
east of the loop here doesn't seem to affect how the water runs under Route 46. So I'm on the towpath still. This is what I've been clearing out for the last month or so. It's been partially filled in. Again, the raised towpath scooped up and thrown into the canal. But it's still raised more than the adjacent yard. I'm getting rid of all the the brush and the small trees and the branches and I come through with a chainsaw and clean all the rest up. But you see we're may, maybe even in the canal right here. Up here's a nice towpath though. And this was converted to a drainage ditch by the city of Rome in the 1880s. They dug a, a ditch down the middle of Clinton's ditch. And the further west they went, the deeper it had to be in order to keep the water flowing in that direction. So from that loop or from that culvert, Westerly, it just gets deeper and deeper. Right here is the western turn where it takes a bend. And it'll cut up through there. Right at the bend is where it was cut. And the channel proceeds south into Wood Creek. So what you see right there, that's the towpath, and that's where it would hook across to now the other side. There's maybe a 20-foot gap in between. And there's the towpath on the other side. One of my most important and... Uh, So we're looking down the towpath, and that's the canal that's been tampered with drastically. Here's the cut that lets the water escape and go south. Now my plan calls for a dam spillway weir right here. With that, you can control this whole little horseshoe of Clinton's Ditch. For the time being, I've laid a couple boards down on this edge here. I wouldn't let anybody else do it, but I'm fine. Now this is a site that's been dramatically filled in for this section. Where I'm standing right now, this should be canal. This was all filled in. You can almost see the line there. It's right about at the edge of that wood pile. And it continues all the way down. It's about half the canal's width. So this is that sharp bend on the west. It also has one on the east that's not quite as sharp. I just heard somebody.
Look at all that. This is the part that I haven't cleaned out. But up there's the tow path. Right here's where it's cut. And that's where the tow path continues. And you can see the slope of the canal. Right where that bucket is, that's the bottom of the canal. That's the towpath up there. And that's the berm. The towpath from this point, it's pretty nice. It's in good shape. Working on clearing this part out now. It's pretty exciting because I don't know what I'm going to uncover heading west. It doesn't go terribly far in this direction. First, I'll hit those ridiculous train tracks. And after I get past that, there'll be a, another short distance until you reach the enlarged canal right around the first dig site. This towpath even now is raised five, six feet more than the southern side. Once I remove all these trees, it's really going to start to show itself. But I got a ways to go. I got to blaze through this stuff. Hopefully this week I'll be all the way to the train tracks. So I want to see how much more this opens up. That it's very wide, really wide. I don't know if maybe they scooped some of it and th threw it off the edge to widen it enough to drive vehicles on. Clinton's towpath is about 12 feet wide. This is twice that. And if this is the, the canal bottom here, wouldn't be that hard to tell just dig a little bit as soon as you get to that nice clay bottom you know but from here to the the towpath top edge it's like three feet so you're missing a couple feet here either it's filled in in the canal or they they scrape the towpath a couple feet probably a little of both So I don't really have a method of my madness here. I'm just taping because the water was so high. And since I was recording that, I might as well come by and hit this section that I'm currently working on. Good burn spot right in the middle of the canal. It's safe. I always have a bucket with me. So now I'm walking up into the north side This is sort of a dissection of a raised towpath berm for Clinton's ditch. So a dam and a spillway weir right here. And you'll be able to, to have this completely full. And little by little peck away at getting it restored. This little segment here, a little sliver of our treasured past. So right here where I'm walking, this is all filled in. This is all canal.
Here's a pretty obvious high spot where a ridge runs. And it connects right with the part that I know is. So the line I'm gonna walk right now is as if I was walking at the very edge of the northern bank. deviate from my line for a moment just to zoom up on this. So more than half of the canal has been filled in mostly to the north. I measured this in five sections last summer, average of 15 feet across for this inner loop. See, because this roadway, it goes in a loop over by that fort, and it'll hook around towards the church, and then the school, and cross again to the east right there. So they refer to this as the loop. Blah, blah, blah. This side right here has been filled in a little bit. Again, this is the south side towpath couple feet here and there has been filled in. It's much higher here. Almost completely gone there. It needs to be as high as I am and higher. Down towards the very end is a, a decent representation of, of the height that the uh, the raised berm should be. And it would come straight at me. Be about a foot higher than I am right now, at least. So when you get to over here, you need a couple feet. And that's why when this gets high, this level, this little part that's not trimmed, that's the first thing that goes underwater, even before it starts to, to flood over the road there. This section is the lowest right here. I would like an excavator and come in here and fix that. Obviously with an archeologist and raise that, repair the berm completely and have it raised three feet. Continue down this path. Right there where it starts to raise the level, that's the edge of the canal right there. It's almost like a terrace. I've got the water level here, a foot or two higher than it is in the inner loop. You can see what I mean about the edge needing to be cleaned up. Here's some of the, the new riprap.
So you can see right here, there's quite a bit that's been filled in right here. Everything to the left of me, or the right of me. This, since closure, has been used in various forms as a dump in layers. They'll fill it up and take the towpath, scoop it up and throw it over the, the garbage to cover it up and then put more garbage in. No, Rick doesn't want me to, to do any more digging over here for now because of the trouble that he has with Rome Historic Society. I could fix that in 10 minutes, but I'm just going to leave it alone. It only gets better the further east I go. There's three old foundations down there, right at the eastern bend. She's full, but she should be more full. If I could fix that burst right there, or that low point, shall I say it didn't burst, it's just a low point. That's going to be the Camp Clinton. Right on the north side of Clinton's Ditch. <laughs> 